I can fully appreciate this talk, you might need to have a shot each, so pass it all around as we begin. I love how you're like you like invested in your talk. Well, I talk so hard. I try and invest in your talk. You can't buy tequila, tequila, tequila in Redfern. I tried. But thanks to Kim and Katan for providing for everybody. Okay, so I'm, um, I'm not talking about Old Spice, but I'm talking about an experiment done in Mexico with a group of chemists who actually did turn tequila into diamonds. Um, and my original thought was, lol, what, or like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> How even is this some kind of joke, alchemy, or something? But. It's his first name, Jose, as well. <laughs> I actually don't know, but I assume so. Where is it? But. It turns out to be a, a wonderful example of the surprising beauty of science and how, like, once you know what something is made of and something else is made of, it's almost too obvious that it should be able to transform something. And that's the case for me for this um, for this paper. Um, so to answer that question, obviously we have to know what tequila is. Um, basically, it's a type of alcohol, and specifically, it's 40% ethanol in water, pretty much. There's a few, you know, additives that make it taste the way that it tastes, but basically it's 40% ethanol in water. Um, and this is a chemical formula of ethanol. It's basically, it's got some carbon, it's got some hydrogen, and it's got some oxygen. Um, so, yeah. Um, and the ethanol, the ethanol content comes from the distillation process, which essentially breaks down the natural sugar of plants into, into ethanol and... Uh, CO2 and some other stuff. Um, and what is diamond? And diamond is just carbon. Um, and it has to be arranged in a specific structure called diamond structure. And basically the atoms are bonded together in a specific way. And the cool thing about carbon is it forms a number of different um, a number of different substances out of one single element. So this is all the same atom. It's, it's got you know 12 protons, 12 neutrons and 12 electrons. But if, you, if they actually, in a solid form, sit together in a different regular way, they become different materials. So you might also know that, um, no, that's just what I said, that graphite is also made of carbon, but it's bonded in this different structure, which is just layers of graphene. So they bond together in these hexagons and then sit on top of each other in layers. And we've known about graphite for a long time and known that it was made of carbon. And graphene is this really new, interesting material where you can get, you can separate these 2D sheets and you can roll them up and, to form these carbon nanotubes which are a new sexy part of physics at the moment. <laughs> and, well, what physicists think is sexy. <laughs> um, and and uh, the, the discovery in the first isolation of graphene from graphite was kind of cool as well because the researchers kept trying to, you know, get these layers apart and they found out that the best way to do it was to just stick, stick, stick it, was to get a lead pencil, which is made of graphite, and just draw on some paper for a while, and then get some sticky tape and stick it on, and they were per pulling off perfect layers of graphene, and that was how they first isolated graphene. So that's all. Now you can also get these buckets. <laughs> 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 <It's outrageous. laughs> you can also get the bucky balls, which bucky is balls. which is 60, 60 carbon atoms arranged in this soccer ball-like formation. I'm not quite sure what it does, but it's kind of it's a lubricant. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> I don't know why I know that. <laughs> no, we, don't, we don't want to know that. <laughs> um, it's also dark blue. Um, and yes, and carbon is incredibly versatile because you consider that diamond is one of the hardest substances and graphene is one of the softest substances. And it's all just about how the way these atoms come together in a solid. Um, so yeah, that's what diamond is. And so how to make diamonds? Well, you have to get carbon to bond on the right structure, of course. Because under normal conditions, that is room temperature and sea level pressure, graphite is the most stable state of carbon. So over a long, 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 long period of time, if you sit a diamond at room temperature over thousands, probably millions of years, it will actually turn into graphite. So diamonds actually aren't forever, so... <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> advertisers, man. Um, so in nature, uh, diamonds form under high pressures and high temperatures in the middle of the Earth. So in, think like in, in volcanic flows, um, 
this is where you get high temperatures and high pressures such that graphite will actually go from that uh, layered structure into forming into diamond structure and it creates this incredibly hard material from incredibly soft material. So already we're seeing crazy things can happen out of surprising places. Or you can get in outer space. I don't know if you saw recently this diamond planet that they discovered. What? Um, wow. That there's, there's a planet, you know, mostly, <laughs> mostly composed of diamond, which is, you know, so everyone goes, wow, but it's just carbon. It's just carbon <laughs> bonded in a particular structure, which makes a lot of sense because, you know, carbon is a pretty common byproduct of, of, um, of supernovae. And so, you know, that it collects in space and collects it in a star and there are high temperatures, high pressures, and it spun off a planet made of diamond. Um, that's, you know, an artist's representation. Nobody's actually seen it. They probably... They look kind of half. <laughs> <laughs> they went there, they've been there, they cut it in half, yeah. Um, um, yeah, but uh, we can also make diamonds um, artificially because diamond is a very good insulator, so it's useful to grow um, in thin films for electronics, basically. Um, what, and, you know, also to try and make money, and they try and make money by replicating the high temperature and high pressure conditions in labs. But this tends to give you single crystals, it tends to give you this kind of thing, and not, not the thin films that you'd be after to insulate between two conductors, for example. Um, and that's what kind of starts off how we might be getting tequila from dime, uh, diamonds from tequila. So, it's going to get a little bit technical now, but... <laughs> so how, basically how they create diamond thin films is through this chemical vapour deposition and um, going through what this actually means is deposition is just a term for f forming thin films and here thin is like a, a micrometre, it's a hundredth to a thousandth of a millimetre film uh, uh, and, and you, you deposit this solid material by growing it somehow. Um, and the chemical vapour part is that the deposition happens from something in a vapour phase, so you've got some vapour of some kind of element or molecules, um, and the deposition happens through chemical reactions with a heated substrate. Um, and this pulsed liquid injection part that the Mexicans used basically just means that the chemicals come from injecting liquids into the machine in short pulses, so boom, 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 it's just, it's liquid. And then, uh, and then to get the vapour that they need, they just, they, um, they flash evaporate, they flash evaporate the liquid um, with a high heat and then it's carried to the chamber for interaction with the substrate. So this is a, a diagram from one of the earlier papers when they first developed this, um, this particular um, method for pulse liquid injection. Um, chemical vapor deposition is highly is widely used to create diamonds, but I think they might have been the first one to use this pulse liquid injection. So you've got your precursors, which ends up being tequila eventually, but it, um, it injects through here. There's flash evaporated in here, and it's carried through um, uh, through this um, you know, thing towards where all the magic happens. <laughs> pre precursor just means the chemical that's used in the CVD, the chemical vapor deposition. And it undergoes a bunch of chemical reactions in here that aren't very interesting to most people and reacts with the substrate here. And certain, certain chemicals, depending on what substrate you use, certain chemicals or elements will want to sit on the substrate in a really ordered fashion and the rest will get vacuumed out. And that's how you grow thin layer by layer because when, when you heat this substrate, the, the temperature is such that each, each, each atom is going to want to sit next to each other rather than build on top of each other. So only when you've covered one atom will the next layer take place. And this, and this way you can grow very, very ordered, very, very precise thin films of orders of nanometers or micrometers. Um, so growing diamond thin films by this method, um, again, confusing, but <laughs> they found that, well, it was found in, I, th I took this from a paper in, that came out in 1991, um, that they found the best way to grow diamond thin films by chemical vapors deposition was to use hydrocarbons. And hydrocarbons have hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. And the extent to which those three elements coexist in this, in this liquid or vapor determines whether you're going to get diamonds or not. 
um, or whether you're going to get any growth at all. So this, this diagram basically shows on this axis you have the relative amount of carbon and oxygen. So going up here you have more carbon, less oxygen. Going down here you have more hydrogen, less carbon. And going along here you have more oxygen and less hydrogen. So they found uh, by doing some of their own work in collecting data from a bunch of other people who were growing this in films that there were these that there was in this region in here of this diagram where the hydrogen, carbon and oxygen were together in ratios uh, that when put into a CVD machine would, you would get some diamonds out. And down here you wouldn't get any growth at all and here you would get probably graphite. Um, then there's a few outliers down at the bottom here but you know, it, it, holds, it holds pretty well. And what you might be able to see here is ethanol. And remembering that ethanol is C2H6O um, it's sitting right here. It's, it's outside of the, the, the diamond growth region. Um, but what the Mexicans did was they added some water to that. So they upped, so they upped the hydrogen to move it down here, and they upped the oxygen to move it across here into the diamond growth region. And they were doing experiments with acetone, ethanol, and methanol, and they found that their best diamonds were grown when they had when they diluted 40% ethanol in 60% water. <laughs> and they went, oh, holy crap, what if we buy some tequila? <laughs> and so they bought some tequila and put it into their uh, CVD machine. And they found that it was, uh, although it fell just outside this growth region, again, it still grew excellent diamonds, as seen here on this uh, electron microscope image. And Basically what you're seeing is small little balls of diamond. Um, that scale bar is one micrometer, so that's a thousandth of a millimeter. Um, and you can see this ball-like structure on this scale. Um, and you go, well, how do you know it's diamond? And this is an experimental, uh, another experiment they did that basically shows um, uh, it's, it's a Raman spectra and uh, you just shine a laser at it and see what light comes out. And light, and light of certain wavelengths tell you that you've got a certain structure over another. So you can tell that this is very pure diamond because they just see this one peak and they don't see another couple of peaks that you would get if you had graphite. So yeah, basically that's how you grow diamonds from, um, from tequila. <laughs>